Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Molly from Oztrek. We're having some technical difficulties right now, so please just stay put for one second. Um, our rep from Griffith will be here in a minute. Um, one moment, please. Hi, everybody. Hi, Justine. How are you? Hi, everyone. Hi, Molly. I'm doing well. Unfortunately, our dentistry student is having some trouble connecting. So um, I'm happy to take questions, though, if anybody wants to talk about dentistry. Okay, yeah, let's do this. Um, if anyone has questions, please put them in the chat. Um, and Justine will um, be able to answer them for you. Yes, I've been getting a lot of dentistry questions tonight. I hear, that's awesome. <laughs> Everybody is uh, very geared up for offers about to go out for 2022. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so what is the minimum to apply um, to the DENT program from high school? Yeah, so the minimum has actually recently changed. Um, so now for year 12, students are looking at an 87.8% average. Um, now it is important to mention that that is the absolute minimum. Um, unfortunately, given the competitive environment with dentistry right now, um, that is not really a competitive um, score, certainly not in the last few years um, of what we've seen. So I would say students really need to aim more into the mid 90s um, or better, just absolutely go for it in year 12. Awesome. Um, and when do offers typically come out and does Griffith um, issue early offers? Yeah, so not for dentistry. We, um, we do have a set application deadline and no offers will be assessed until that deadline has passed. So normally our application de deadline for dentistry is kind of August or September. Um, this year it was September, running a little bit later than normal. And normally once the application deadline has passed, offers will go out within two weeks. Great, and can students work during their program and how intensive is the program day to day? Yeah, um, students can work of course in Australia on a student visa, um, but in terms of the dentistry program, it kind of depends. We do have a lot of students coming in who might get um, some credit for first year we rarely see students get credit for all of first year, but there will be students who might get significant credit. Um, those students would certainly have a much lower um, workload in the first year. So they could certainly look at working um, or doing volunteering, something like that. Um, but, you know, students need to be realistic. Um, I would wait and see what the study load is like, because obviously different students are going to feel it in different ways. Um, but I would wait and see what the study load is like before looking at taking on uh, anything additional. Great advice. Um, and will the first year be online for international students starting in 2022? Um, yeah. Do you have any info for 2023? Um, or is the first year deferred? <laughs> A loaded question. <laughs> oh, man, we're not even through the application process for 2022 yet. 
Um, yes, yeah, so 2022, uh, if students can't get into Australia, if borders aren't open, uh, we will offer year one online. Um, and then, you know, at a stage when borders open, like for example, if borders were open by trimester two, um, and then we would expect students to start making their way uh, to campus. Uh, 2023, no great update on 2023 yet because our admissions team has not even got through the application process yet for um, 2022. So nothing more to report there. Okay. Um, and do I need a DAT? If I have a good DAT, will it improve my application? No, not for Griffith. Um, so Griffith doesn't look at anything except GPA. So no DAT, uh, no personal statement, no references required from your counsellor or, you know, anybody. Um, so no, it is purely GPA, which is good news for some, some students, maybe not so good news for other students, but it is what it is. And does volunteering or working at a dental clinic, does that help out your application? Uh, it doesn't help in terms of admissions, but it would certainly help you once you get into um, doing some clinical work, yes. So yeah, not so much for admissions, but you'll definitely have the edge once you get into clinics. And what subjects do students get credit for? Um, the student has first year chemistry, physics, biology, anatomy. Uh, it's difficult to say. Um, usually most of the credit is for things related more to anatomy and physiology, um, but definitely once you've accepted your place, we encourage you to then um, put forward your credit application um, and we will assess uh, on a case-by-case -case basis. Perfect. Um, and have you been given an update about borders? Um, when does Griffith think that the borders may open um, <laughs> for students? <laughs> oh my goodness, I get this question a lot. Um, so you will have heard, most students will have heard by now that um, New South Wales is looking at starting to bring in small numbers of students later this year. Um, so they are the first state to open up and, and allow students to start coming back. Um, what's happening in Australia right now is that it's really on a state by state basis. So each state can decide whether they're gonna open up um, to international flights or not. Um, the Queensland universities have all been lobbying the government very, very hard. Um, and I know all of our communities are very excited to get students back, um, but it's it's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, so we, we I think Queensland will wait to see how the New South Wales um, plan kind of rolls out. Uh, and then kind of go, go from there. But um, the pressure is definitely on. Um, it's not just universities, the communities are very, very excited um, to have students back. So fingers crossed. Yes, we're doing that too. <laughs> um, how will first year be structured if it's all online? Yeah, so you can actually uh, talk to some of our current um, students who've been doing first year online, but generally what they do is they take out um, some of the components where you would need to be um, on campus doing simulation work. Um, so they would move some of that to second year, so you'd be doing a little bit more um, of the theory and classwork uh, in first year. So yeah, just moving that to second year essentially. Um, how many years is your dentistry program? Yeah, so ours is a five-year program. So it's structured as a Bachelor of Dental Health Science plus a Master of Dentistry, which meets all the requirements to become a dentist, both in Australia and in Canada. Um, it's structured like that because we don't just allow um, graduate students to come in. We also allow students coming directly from high school as well. And with credit, is it possible for me to skip a year? No, highly, highly unlikely. Um, we we uh, get asked this question a lot. Um, there are a couple of courses, um, one in particular that sort of has to do with, um, you know, ethics and so on uh, in dental practice that, um, you know, the Griffith professors really um, are very adamant that it has to be done, um, you know, on, on campus, well, on campus with Griffith. So yeah, you'll normally have a very, if you get a lot of credit, you'll have a very, very light first year. Um, but yeah, you'll normally have at least one or two courses to take. Okay, great. And we'll have one more question here. 
Is the average what the admission what admissions bases their decision on, or is it a competitive average? Yeah, so we have an absolute minimum for you to be even considered, period. If you're below that average, you won't even make it. And Austrec knows that, and they will obviously talk to you about that. Um, yeah, in terms of, you know, what's competitive, um, that obviously changes from year to year. So you will be ranked against other students. So it really depends on what other students' grades are like um, in any given year. Um, and, you know, high school students' grades um, are higher. You know, we're looking for a higher average um, in year 12 than students, for example, who've graduated um, from a university program. So it's, um, it's tough. It is very competitive. I won't, um, won't pretend that. It, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, there are always different pathways into dentistry as well. And, you know, if you don't succeed the first time, there are always different ways um, you know, to keep keep applying. We have a lot of students who've applied, you know, three or four times before they get in, um, but but they make it. Yeah, that's right. There's there's no harm in reapplying. No, um, absolutely. And how many dental students are taken for first year? So do you have a um, a maximum amount of international students? Yeah. So our dental program overall is about ninety students, and of that, we take about twenty five to thirty. Uh, international students. So that's actually a pretty good ratio um, of international to domestic students. Um, not a lot of programs ratio is that high for internationals. That's great. Um, yeah. And I guess this this will be our last question here. Do first, <laughs> do first year students have the ability to live on campus or do they live off campus? Yeah, so you can do either. Um, and I think you know, we're lucky. We're one of those universities that has on-campus accommodation, but we also have a lot of options off campus, but still close to campus. Um, so I think it's really, you know, it depends on your lifestyle, what you're looking for, and what stage of life you're at. Um, for example, if you're a grad student coming from Canada, I don't think you're going to want to live on campus with a bunch of first-year Australian students and study abroad students from the US and Europe. So, so, you know, I think particularly if you're doing like dentistry and medicine, you, you probably want to live off campus to make sure you, you kind of with other people who are, you know, kind of as academically minded um, as you are. <laughs> yes, that's right. Um, OK, so we're going to end it here so that um, students can get to the next um, presentation. Thank you so much, Justine. Um, I appreciate you stepping in and awesome. um, Thank you. have a great evening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.